Okay, let's do this search problem today. Okay, we want to look for earthquakes, data, USGS, and I believe it's the search box we want to find out. So this first one is the right one. We do that. We want to change the start date here to be 2010 uh, from 5th of August to today, which is fine. Minimum magnitude, I'm going to say it be 3, so I changed that. Um, I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to want to get the CSV file because I want to download the data. I don't want the KML or any of that stuff. I'm going to put in the geographic region, which in this case is the north is 49. And these are values I've already looked up before. Minus 128, this is the west coast of North America. East is minus 62, that's the east coast of North America. South, that's, this is roughly the, the latitude of Cuba, about 20, everything else. And what I'm going to do is get the CSV file and I say search. Now watch down here. It's going to start showing me the download in the lower left corner. So that query.csv file is the file that contains all the values. So let's take a look at that. So what I want to do, so what I want to do first is import the spreadsheet. So what I do is import in this case, from my drive, uh, let's see, I want to upload it. So I select from the downloads query.csv. Now what this is doing is uploading this query CSV file from USG. I want to create a new spreadsheet. Open. There we go. So what I want to do first is to change this. I call this USGS SGS earthquake data for North America uh, 2010 to 2014. And I'll put in the metadata in just a second. So what I'm going to do here is insert a comma, comment, which will be data from between, well, let's actually go, let's actually go get the, the very last row here. So we get the exact date. So we've got, this is data from 2010. Uh, August, so this is 3,496 rows, 2,000, okay, so I go back up to the top, 2010, okay, done, there's my metadata. Okay, so now what I need to do is to first copy all of this. So I'm going to take this entire spreadsheet, copy. Now what I want to do is add a new sheet here. So I change the name of this sheet to the original source data. Okay, now I add a new tab, say paste. This is pasting all of the rows of the data. So now I've got a complete copy. This, so this is my copy. I'm going to rename this to be copy of data. Now, what I want to do is to first extract the name of the state. So you see here, each one of these cells has, after the comma, the state. And there are more complicated ways to do this, but what I'm going to do is to work out what the value of that last thing after the comma is. So what I want to do is pull off this part right here. I want to just extract that. So how do I do that? So first, let's write this as a series of steps. So first thing I want to do is say find. I want to search for the text comma. 
and I want to search in this field, in this uh, cell here, let's see what I got here. So the value there is 20. Now what I want to do, so I'm going to do this incrementally in each cell one by one. So now I want to say grab the right of that cell from 20 to the length of the string. So to figure out what that is, I want to go from 20 to the length of the string. So I do 20 length of the string, which is that cell, minus 20. And that should be the number of characters left, right? Let's see, that's exactly what we got. But you see something funny here? We've got one character too many here. If you look in there, the value of that is, it's got a space in front of it. Let me show you that again. See that space right there? I want to get rid of that. So what I want to do is make this to be not 20, but this value over here, which remember was the find in that string. comma, comma, there we go, in there. Okay, now you see what I've done is I've built up two expressions and I just combined them here. So here I'm looking for the comma in that string in n2, finding the number, taking the length of n2, which is then the position of the space after the comma, and then using that to use the right function to extract out the whole thing. Does that make sense? Okay, so one th other thing to point out here is it's actually slightly different. I'm going to say length minus find minus one. And actually see, before there was a little space there. So it was counting up to the comma, but it was always comma space. So I just added that extra one to get rid of the space. So now I should be able to copy this down. So I'm going to just to test it, say, Command D, and you can see now that the state is in here. Okay, you see what I've done? So what I'm going to do is select this cell here and scroll all the way to the bottom to my very last row in row in column Q. Hit the Shift key and then click, and that selects that entire column. Now I type Command D for copy down, and what that does is it copies down the whole expression. Now, you see what's happened? Now we've got something a little bit funny here. We see all these values. What's going on here? Well, in find evaluation, it says you cannot find comma within Utah. Well, let's go look at, at column N and see, oh, there's a special case here that says if there's not a comma, then that find expression won't work, right? So what we need to do is go back up here. Let's go back up to the top. We need to do another special case to handle that. So here we've got, let's go down to the first error. First error has got to be here somewhere. There it is. If error on find comma in this one, then what I want to do is just return that value, right? Which is that value, in this case, N181. So what we want to do now is copy this down. And you can see that that'll work in all these cases like Wyoming and so on. So what can we do here? So now what, what you see what I've got here is this complex expression. So let's look up here, right? Blah, 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 blah. So what I want to do is actually combine these. So you see, we've got this if error when we find that. Instead, what we want to do is actually use the expression from up here, or this whole expression, this right thing, blah, 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 blah. So if that throws an error, then give that value. Otherwise, we want that value. So you see what this right expression that I've highlighted here does, is it pulls out the last token the last state name after the comma. But if the cell only has the state name in it, it throws an error. Okay, so what I'm going to do, watch this, is I'm going to take that lesson we learned from before and say if error, this whole expression, then 
I want to return that. Now watch what happens. What this does now is this is a better expression, what I've done here. If we have an error because this right len find thing fails, then we want to return this, this expression here, which is n182, which is just the value of the name of the state. So I come through and now delete this. What I'm going to do is take this longer expression, go to the bottom, and hit command, select to the bottom of my column, and now type command D. What that will do is give me the expression all the way down here. So you see we've got a couple of funny things in here, like Quebec, Canada. Uh, do I really care about that? No, I don't care about that, because we're going to just search for states like Nevada and California and so on. This is great. We want to take the word itself or the last word. So what you see me doing is actually figuring out I don't care about New Hampshire here, off the coast, of, but I do care about off the coast of Northern California. So what we want to do is now write a new expression, which grabs the last word. I want to write a new expression, which grabs the last word. You see me doing is adding in a regular expression to pull off the last word of that cell's value. So now we've got all these extracted states. Good, this is looking good. So notice what I'm doing is spot checking all this. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we do um, extracted state final form. Okay, so now we've got R, column R is the extracted state names for everything. What I can do now is create just the California table. I'm going, in this case, I'm just going to do California, and I guess I'll do Oklahoma. So what I will do now is to go to Data, go to Filter, and what that does is it now allows me to see these new little tab things here, these little down pointing arrows. If I click on that, that will give me the chance to filter on. So on all these different values. See, this is all the values in that column, which is all, all the states, right, plus Mexico. So what I'm going to do is deselect them all, because all I want to do with this pass is do California. And then I say, OK. What this will do is now give me only California values. You see here, these are all California states earthquakes. Well, what we'll do now, now that we've got this, is I'm going to Select all, like I've got here, copy. That copies all of the data. I can create a new spreadsheet, and I call this California data. Edit, paste, special, because I want to paste the values only, because I just want those column values, right? And what this does is it now gives me a copy of all this data with the final form. So now I can take this row and delete it, this column rather, and uh, I'm going to delete this one, delete that column. Now nothing changes over here in Q because remember there's nothing dependent on anything in a pri previous column. Delete that column. And now we've got it. So we don't need O either because we know they're all earthquakes. Delete that column. Uh, we'll just leave everything else here. Um, that's all fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is we've got all the data here. I'm just checking. I'm scrolling down to check the data. 2003, 2004, 14, all that stuff. Okay, good. So now let's extract the date or the year. Remember what the year is going to be? It's going to be the left of, in this case, Column what? Column A, let's do column A, 2, and it's going to be the first four characters, 2014, no four characters, right? And now we've got the year. So I'm going to select that, scroll to the bottom of this data, select Command D to copy down, and you see I've got these 10, 2010s. 2011s, 2012s, 2013s, and so on, okay? Now, the last step here is I want to count 
each year the number of earthquakes. Remember this, we're in the California spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is say year earthquakes. 2014, 2013, 2012, 2011, 2010. Okay. What I want to do now is write a, a, an expression here which counts the number of events or earthquake events in that year. So I'm going to say equals count if, in this case, the range is column P over here. I'm going to say P1 to P, I'm going to give it a giant number, 4,000, because it won't count things that aren't there. And I want to count it if it's 2014. Okay, you see what that does? It's going to count the number of times that piece of text in green, 2014, appears somewhere in column P. So you see it's 180 times. So what I want to do is do that same thing here. Count if in the range P2 to P3000, whatever, I want to count 2013. And I have to use quotes here because if you notice over here, this number is left justified. That means it's a text, not a number. So we'll do that. Same thing. I'm going to do that same. I'm going to select that, copy down. And now the numbers are all the same because they're the same value, but I want to change this from 2013 to 2012. Change that number from 2013 to 2011. Oops, that was a typo on my part. 2011. Okay, 2010, there we go, okay? So now I've got the year and I've got the number of earthquakes. So number earthquakes, okay? So we've done this for California. Now let's come back over here to the copy of the data, copy it again. I'm gonna do the same thing for Oklahoma. So I copied that data. I now make a new spreadsheet. We'll call this one Oklahoma data. Come up to cell A1, paste, special, values only. Now actually, that was a mistake. Let's go back and do, do, undo that. Remember, I forgot. I'm going to switch this not to California. I'm going to... Um, Wrong one. I'm going to filter here not on California, but on Oklahoma, like that. Okay, now I've got nothing but earthquakes in Oklahoma. So I do copy again, copy the values, come over here to Oklahoma data, paste special, just the values. And now, guess what? I've got exactly that same data except for Oklahoma. So I'm going to come over here and copy this these formulas here because it will work over here in the Oklahoma data. For If I put this... Okay, so I deleted that, but now I want to change this row P, column P, to be the year. So I'm going to change this to year. And I'm going to repeat that same formula, equals left of A24. Remember that from before? So select, scroll to the bottom, copy down. And now I've got my years. Now I can come up to the top again. Here I've pasted my formulas from the previous spreadsheet from over here from California data. But notice that the columns are not quite the same, so I gotta go in and fix the formulas. So I come in here and say, this is not in column Q, this is in column P. P to P4000, and then I'm gonna copy that down. Okay, and I have to change I have to change the values now here. Not to be 2014, to be 2013. Okay, did that. Come in here, edit this. To be 2012. To be 2011. To be 
10. And now I've got the number of earthquakes in Oklahoma during the year 2014, 2013, 2012, and so on. We're almost ready to make our chart. So I'm going to copy this column, number of earthquakes, copy by saying edit, copy. I'm now I'm going to make a new spreadsheet, a new tab, and I'm going to call this one charts. So first I want to paste my Oklahoma data right there. First I want to paste my Oklahoma data here as paste special values only. So this is 2014, 2013, 12. I should have copied the number, the, the entire thing directly, but I'm too lazy. There we go. So this is Oklahoma. And now we want to go back and get the California data. So we go back to California data here. We copy the number of earthquakes. So select that range, copy, come back to charts, say paste special. That is only. And now we've got California and Oklahoma. And now we're about ready to do our chart. So now I want to insert my chart. So I'm going to say insert chart. Here's that function here. I want to choose my own chart. So I want to choose a line chart. And what I, what I want to do is use column A as labels, use row one as headers. I'm going to choose my chart type to be line, which will give me one of these. Insert. And now you can see I've got my chart. There's the data. And you can see Oklahoma's in blue, California's in red, and in 2014, Oklahoma has surpassed California in the total number of earthquakes. I hope this makes clear how this process works.